From the past few years, I have been noticing that India is becoming a top tourist destination. And of course, everyone visits Delhi because it is the starting point of any India tour. But I know that traveling in Delhi can be overwhelming and confusing. And that is why your girl is here to tell you every single thing you need to know to plan your own trip to Delhi. If you're new here, then I'm Akanksha and I post videos every Sunday about traveling, living and moving abroad. And you can count on me to make your life easy. As usual, timestamps are in the description box below. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Delhi is very well connected with international flights, with Indira Gandhi International Airport being the only international and domestic airport in the city. And if you're coming from other part of India, you can always catch a train or a bus. There are plenty of options to get to Delhi. One really amazing thing about Delhi is the fact that public transport is so good, cheap and very well connected. So once you get off your plane, go through immigration and collect your bags, you can actually catch a metro train to get from airport to anywhere else in the city. However, be mindful that metros can get very, very crowded, especially in peak hours. So if you don't really want to travel in a tight budget, I would say book an Uber from the airport to your hotel. Uber works in India and there's another rideshare service called Ola, which is same as Uber and both platforms are amazing as well as very cheap. To get around in the city, again, metro is an amazing option because this is the metro line. This is how well connected Delhi is with metro trains. To use the metro, you will need a ticket. You can buy a single use ticket or the metro cards. They're available at all stations and you can just walk up to customer service and ask to buy a card. One person can only use one card, so if you are multiple people, each of one of you will need one card each. And I do not recommend using buses in Delhi because they are never on time. But since traveling in Delhi is so cheap, you can always book an Uber or take the auto rickshaw, which you might also know as Tuk Tuk. We don't call it Tuk Tuk in India, we call it auto or auto rickshaw. And when I'm visiting Delhi, I prefer to use Uber unless I know where I'm going is going to have a lot of traffic on the way. And on that topic, just remember that Delhi's traffic is insane. If Google Maps shows you 30 minutes to get somewhere, keep one hour in hand. And for shorter distances, you can always take these cycle rickshaw or e-rickshaws, which I would say is a great experience because I have not seen anything like this anywhere else. Where to stay in Delhi? Firstly, I will tell you where not to stay in Delhi. Paharganj and Old Delhi are very common places where tourists think they should stay at, but I would advise against it. Because these two areas are very crowded, it's not safe also at night, and has some of the worst traffic in the city. My suggestion would be to stay in either Connaught Place, Central Delhi or South Delhi. These two areas are safer and well connected to other parts of the city. You will have plenty of things to do at night if you're bored because there are hundreds of markets around these areas. And getting around taking a metro or even just a cab or an auto rickshaw is even easier. Central Delhi has some really nice chain hotels and you can find some really good Airbnbs in these areas to get the local experience. Now, if you're concerned about whether you should carry cash or not, then let me tell you, India is although cash dependent, but card is used almost everywhere. You will definitely need to carry cash, so it's always safe to have about 1000 to 2000 rupees in your hands at all times. But in Delhi, most hotels, restaurants, cafes, they accept card. And India uses Indian rupees, which is INR. This is the current exchange rate for INR. You can either get it exchanged at a really bad price at the airport, or you can wait for a little while and get it exchanged at one of these currency exchange kiosks in Connaught Place. I have seen many in Connaught Place. So if you're not in a hurry, I would suggest wait and get it exchanged from the city itself. And if you're thinking what is the best time to go to Delhi, then I can tell you again what is not the best time, which is summer. Delhi summers are extreme. It is hot, very, very hot. Some days it can go way above 40 degrees and going out in the mid afternoon is like very intense. Delhi experiences summer from April to June. But apart from these months, you can go during winters, which is a nice time. It can get pretty cold though. According to me, September and October is an ideal time because the weather is perfect and you can enjoy things in a good temperature. If you're going to India, do not forget to take travel insurance. That is like a must have for your trip. Even before you book your tickets, make sure you know what travel insurance you want to have. I personally use Safety Wing, which is a great insurance and it covers a lot of different things, including extreme sports. 
So if you want to check that out, the link is in the description box. And if you get that insurance using my link, I do get a little bit of referral bonus, which helps me keep up this channel. And if you like what you are saying, then why don't you also hit the subscribe button while we are at the topic. While we are talking about Delhi, how can we forget about food? The most famous thing in Delhi is its street food that is popular all across the world and people know this city for it. This city's cuisine goes back centuries where its roots are buried in history that has influence from different eras. Trust me when I say this, we love our food and we love eating. If you're here and you miss out on street food, you are missing out on the actual authentic Delhi experience. So I would highly suggest keep a day separate for just trying out the different kinds of food this city has to offer and I'm sure you will be left in a gastronomical coma. Whenever I visit Delhi, I make sure that I eat everything that I love because nothing in the world is close to this. And if you ask me, I would suggest that you should definitely try eating tandoori momos in there. That is one of my top favorite dishes. Then if you're going in winters, you can always find sweet potato sellers, which is a really nice sweet and savory street food snack. And it is kind of healthy too, I guess. You should definitely try it Kareem's which is in Old Delhi as well as they have different branches all across Delhi and go there, try their Jahangiri chicken. It is one of the best things I have ever tried and I absolutely love it. And of course you will be visiting Old Delhi so make sure you do not miss out the jalebis from Jalebiwala. You can always go on an Old Delhi food tour and I swear this is the best thing you will try because the food in there is so authentic and so good. You can find the link to this tour in the description box and do let me know if you end up booking it. The next best thing to do in Delhi after food is historical monuments. There are so many of them that even I have not seen all of those monuments and trust me if you love history you would love going here. Out of all of these, I think Humayu's Dome is one of the top things that tourists do and I went here for the first time. It was a great experience and after Humayu's Dome, you can just cross the road and go to Sundar Nursery. I did the whole experience and I have made a whole video about it. The link is here, you can check it out. Then if you're in Old Delhi, you can always go and visit Red Fort which is really great. It has been years since I went there. This time I tried but Red Fort is closed on Mondays so don't do that. Don't make the mistake like I did. And there are more other monuments in the city which you can check out depending on how much time you have. Also, there are plenty of videos on YouTube to tell you where should you go in Delhi. So I will not get into that because this video is about how to travel Delhi. But I do want to give a special mention to Delhi's street shopping because it is cheap and it is so good. I have always been a street shopper myself. I never used to go to big shopping malls and shop from there because you get similar kind of stuff from hawker stalls as well and some of those clothes are super cool. They are kind of thrift clothes and vintage clothes so if you are interested in that definitely check out Janpat Market and Sarojini Nagar Market. These two places are for clothes and junk jewelry. Now this was my first time visiting Banjana market but if you are going to Delhi and you have some spare time make sure you go to Banjara market in Gurugram which is a little bit outside of Delhi and this is a place where you will get everything related to home decor. I was mind blown by the fact that how many things were being sold here and how amazing those pieces were at such dirt cheap prices. I did buy a few things for my home as well and they were so cool. I'm sure if I was living in Delhi, I would be going to Banjara Market every other day. So if you want to pick up some good pieces for your home decor, check out Banjara Market. And my fellow Indian travelers, if you have any recommendation for markets or places to visit or food to eat, put them in the comment section below for others to see. And also don't forget to hit the like button because I want to know if you like this kind of video or not. And also while we're at it, subscribe to the channel. This section is for my fellow female solo travelers who are going to Delhi. I just want to let it out there that Delhi is not the safest city for women. So you do need to be a little extra careful. Avoid secluded and dark areas. If you think some place is really shady, just do not go there. It is definitely shady. If you're going out, try and stick to crowded areas where there are more people and maybe avoid staying out late at night by yourself. You might find someone with bad intentions here and there and you have to be extra vigilant for that. If you're going out, be vigilant of your surroundings. Don't accept food or drinks from anyone. That's like basic stuff that you do when you're traveling alone. If you have a strong feeling that something does not feel right, remove yourself from that situation because your intuition is stronger than anything else. Always let someone back home know where you are, share your live location, share your current location, share your itinerary and your details of where you are staying. And dress modestly so that you are not attracting a lot of attention. 
It's the harsh truth, but not every man has the right intention towards you. And if someone is telling you that they can take you to a hidden gem, please do not do that. This is not the city where you can hop on a bike with someone and find some something cool or meet with locals. I would always suggest going out with a guide or a group and just be careful, be aware of what you're doing and be vigilant. It's not like something happens every other day, but it is important to be aware of what can happen and stay safe. If you're taking Uber at night, make sure you also have Google Maps on so you can make sure that the person is driving in the right direction. And if you think that something is off, just raise the alarm. There is an SOS button on Uber in India. You can just use that and intimate authorities. And finally, if you're going to Delhi or any part of India, just make sure you embrace the culture, embrace the diversity and embrace the chaos. It is a country like no other. You will have a culture shock and you'll come back feeling like a different person with such intense experience that no other country can give you.